Hello everyone, my name is Sean, and I'm going to go over how to install a free piece of software called Fail to Ban to protect, in, to protect a, your OpenSSH server against brute force attempts using usernames and passwords. Um, Fail to Ban is a free, lightweight piece of software, very simple to install, very simple to configure, and uh, very effective. Uh, the way that this software actually works is that it follows your OpenSSH logs uh, to detect against repeated repeated attempts to log into your server that have failed. Um, so let's begin. Uh, to do this you're just going to go into your terminal. In this case I'm in the terminal of my server and we're going to do uh, the following command sudo at dash get install fail to ban. Now I already have the program installed but I'll show you what you're going to see on your side. Uh, your side will differ from what I'm seeing here. Your, you will actually see the application download and install. Um, and that's it. Pretty much, once you have this installed, 90% of the work is already done for you. The configuration file um, uh, does pretty well at doing uh, some basic security. Uh, but we want to fine tune everything, of course. You don't want to use everything default. So, to go ahead and uh, change our our configuration, uh, we're going to go into fail to bans install directory. Fail to bans located at uh, etc slash fail to ban directory. And now, once we're there, we were actually to list the files that we have in this directory. We have four. Uh, we're more we're most interested in jail.conf so we're going to edit this file so I'm going to use nano uh, text editor you can use whatever software uh, whatever text editor you like uh, Pico, VI, Emacs, whichever suits your fancy and we've opened that up uh, the configuration file up now we're for the sake of the video we're just going to uh, stop at SSH. Now, fail to ban is not designed specifically for SSH. It also protects uh, FTP servers, Apache, uh, in certain implementations. You can actually use asterisks to, uh, you can protect against an asterisk server. So, to prevent unauthorized attempts to gain access to one of your SIP accounts. Um, you're pretty much going to follow the same steps, but uh, uh, with asterisks and all the other ones, each one has to be tuned for its specific uh, function. So, uh, the first part we're going to look at is the ban time. Now, by default, it's 600 seconds. I've since changed that to my val my personal value, what I think is great. Uh, again, you can change it to uh, 5 seconds if you want. Way too short. Um, you might as well not have anything installed uh, for 5 seconds, but um, uh, if you if you have it, let's say, uh, let's say you wanted it to be an hour, you'd put in, you know, uh, the amount of seconds for an hour and such and such. Uh, the max we try by default is six. I've since set it to three, um, and that's just my personal um, threshold that I set. Again, you can set it to whatever you want. Uh, if this is a server that um, many users are accessing on a daily basis. Uh, let's say it's an SSH server on a specific network that is used to access um, your your uh, customer devices, and let's say this is a corporate environment uh, or um, or a small business environment. You might want to have a little bit more leeway, maybe about five, six attempts, because you know it's a user on a daily basis. But for uh, for remote administration, you want to have it low because of the, the amount of SSH uh, or the amount of brute force attempts that happen on a daily basis using uh, scripts and bots. Uh, you want to have a, a bit of a, a tight grip as to how many times someone's able to try to log into your server with the wrong usernames and passwords. So, moving on. Um, we're going to edit another part of our file, so we're just going to come down here a bit, and you're going to see the section where it says jails, and we're going to look for SSH, and by d 
default, you're going to see enable equals true, uh, the port SSH, um, and uh, the log path. Uh, now, this is important. You want to leave the log path default where, uh, where this log path is not the log path of fail to ban. This is the log path of the SSH, the SSH log that is actually going and um, it's going to detect what IPs uh, are offending. Uh, so basically leave that, leave that as it is. Um, now the max retry we're going to, uh, by default is actually six. I've set it to three to match my, uh, my configuration. And now once we have our steps and uh, everything is configured, what we're going to do is uh, save this file. So control O, enter, and control X to leave the text editor. Now once we're done that, we're going to want to restart the fail to ban, uh, the fail to ban service. So to do this, sudo service. Fail to ban restart and there we go. Uh, you restart it. It now uses all your new uh, all your new configurations and um, now it's pretty much set up. Uh, there's not much more to do. This software has additional capabilities. Uh, you can actually have it set up so each time it bans an IP. Uh, you get an email. Now, the way that this software actually works on the banning the IP portion is that it'll take the IP, it'll make a rules, a rule in the um, in your IP tables to block further attempts uh, against the SSH protocol from this from this IP. So let's see um, let's see how this works. So what we're going to do is. I'm going to get off my remote machine here. I'm going to open up another terminal on my local machine. And we're going to attempt to remotely access this server with a wrong username and password. And um, actually, um, sorry to say, I think um, uh, while I was testing for the demo, this my IP was already banned. Um, so to check and see what um, the server is seeing, we're going to go cd slash var slash log and then fail. Actually, I'm sorry. <laughs> it's actually cat because uh, uh, the fail to ban and the law is uh, actually a log file. So cat slash var slash log slash fail to ban dot log. And as you can see, yes, my IP was already banned, um, as you see here. And this is uh, what you're going to be uh, seeing. Uh, you'll check the log regularly. Uh, and you'll see once an IP has been banned, you'll see ban and then the IP address. Uh, you can actually see the actual attempt by issuing the same type of command, cat, but what we're going to do is we're going to look at the auth authorization logs. And as you can see, um, when I was doing the testing for this uh, server to make sure uh, the demo was working, um, you'll see root, root, root from the same IP, and then it'll finally drop the connection. Um, and uh, that's it. The uh, software is installed, configured, and uh, is working. As you can see, connection timed out. Connection timed. Okay, so that's the end of my video. Uh, thanks for watching. 
I hope that you uh, found this video useful and I hope that you implement this simple basic uh, in, uh, security feature uh, into your OpenSSH server. Uh, again, thanks for watching. If you have any comments, uh, questions, or suggestions, please leave them. And uh, of course, you can always visit my blog, uh, www.seanmancini.com. Uh, have a good day.